have conflicts. Um, we currently have two days set aside, today and Wednesday, uh, for the Council to consider and adopt two important documents, our draft climate change strategy and our final long-term plan. So the order of uh, play for today's meeting is as follows. Uh, first, we will consider item three, the Ototahi Christchurch uh, draft climate resilience strategy, uh, where we will consider and adopt the strategy. We will then consider item four, the 2021-31 long-term plan. Uh, we will hear from the chair of the Audit and Risk Management Committee, uh, uh, Kim Wallace, regarding the committee's consideration of the long-term plan, uh, the draft as it was. We will then hear from uh, Andy Burns of Audit New Zealand to the table to provide a verbal update on the auditor's report. Uh, staff will then present the LTP report and then we will work through our LTP pro proposal um, and I'll explain that process when we uh, come to that item. So I'd like to uh, move to the Ototahi Christchurch draft uh, climate resilience strategy um, and, uh, and I will hand over to uh, Emma Davis, Head of Strategic Policy and Carrie Graydon, Senior Policy Analyst, to introduce this item. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, so, as has been outlined, um, we are here today to present um, the Kiatura Te Ao Christchurch Climate Resilience Strategy for adoption. So, following public consultation of the strategy and feedback through the long-term plan, um, we've heard very strongly from submitters uh, for stronger support for climate action and this strategy provides a framework for um, collective action to deliver on its goals. Submitters supported the overall goals of the strategies and the 10 programmes. Uh, there was a call though, and we heard this um, for urgency around what we're doing, and also some more sort of um, tangible and specifics around the strategy. In response to that, we've strengthened our commitment to do this work um, and provided more information, particularly on the Council's emissions and how we're going to partner with uh, the community and organisations to really bring the strategy um, to life through more detailed action plans under the 10 proposed under the programmes. We've heard from businesses, our partners, youth, and many other organisations and individuals wanting to be involved with developing the next phase and the key actions that underpin it. We've also responded to the feedback with a proposed additional $11 million of funding through the LTP, specifically to address those areas that we heard were important, investment in education, and um, how we partner with organisations on sustainability initiatives. So the report um, outlines the detail from submitters and how we've responded to that. That's been incorporated now into the draft and really we present the climate resilience strategy to council for adoption. Now, Sarah, you want to move it and um, do I have a seconder for it, Mel? Um, Coca. <laughs> Melanie Coca. Right. Um, so, are there any questions of staff? Aaron? Yeah, um, I just had a, a question uh, uh, around, the, um, around the start. The very first line is climate change is the biggest challenge of our time. Is that referring to the Council or the world? Probably both, really. Uh, definitely to the world, and also, obviously, council is part of the world, so uh, therefore that will impact on sort of everything council does in the future. Right, because in the first of the amendments, it says about aligning with the United Nations um, SDGs, which, of course, aren't ranked in order, as you'll know, but the United Nations say that addressing poverty is more important than climate change. It doesn't diminish climate change, as I say, that's not important, but the number one 
problem for the world is addressing. Aaron, can, can I just oh, intervene? Because no. okay. we are discussing our climate resilience strategy and uh, the submissions that we received on this uh, backed up the statement. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know that we want to enter into a debate with staff. Okay. You can raise it in your in your commentary when we debate the when we debate the the actual strategy. Okay. Thank you, uh, Yanni. Yeah. Um, like there's a number of things that have been um, raised in here, which we still don't have any clear visibility in, in terms of time frame and funding. So. You know, one one of the issues that's been raised is um, rain rainwater tanks. So I'm just trying to understand why we don't have more specific information around um, around that. So if you if you take, for example, this is on page um, 28, it just says explore options to encourage households to install rainwater collection tanks to water their gardens, reduce burden on our stormwater networks after heavy rain. But there's no like, here's how much it will cost to do the work. Um, here's the time frame which, which it'll be, be done within. Likewise, we've also got the increased, increased tree cover, which, which is a similar one where we know we've got tangible things that we can do, but we haven't actually been explicit. So I guess given the criticism we had around the number of submitters saying that it lacked clear um, priorities and, and funding, why have we not still got that, not got that level of detail? The strategy really is uh, designed as a framework and throughout the 10 programs it's very comprehensive of the areas that we need to focus on to address climate change across those 10 programs. So the strategy wasn't designed to go into detail around all of the costings for all of those activities. Um, the other thing is it's really intended to be a framework that will um, be across councils and across the organisations work. So the examples around rainwater tanks, that is something that we will do with other parts of the organisation and we've already, um, in response to the feedback and interest in that, um, initiated um, um, staff discussions and looking at how we can do a campaign around that. So that's an example. So all of these aspects will... Um, will put more work and attention in to really get that detail, but it's not intended to outline all of that in the strategy. And just the um, final question from me is around a number of um, submitters um, talked about the idea of having um, supporting bus, bus lounges, basically, but I see there's nothing being picked up in here in regards to that. In the transport uh, part of it, there will be um, uh, focus areas to support sort of public transport and looking at that. A lot of that action is more specific and will come through the transport plan and what comes out of that sort of work there. So we're working with the transport team uh, to pursue those sort of priorities in there. Right, so, so the idea that at some stage we'll have a council transport plan which people can feed into around public transport initiatives, is that... Where we're going, or I don't. Yeah, that's right. So, as part of uh, the development of the um, transport plan, um, there'll be, and I understand, there'll be public consultation on that, and people then can feed into the, um, the those suggestions. Right, and there will be a public transport component. I understand there will be. There's also public transport work, obviously, going on with ECAM, with our partners there, um, and so it'll be where that fitted in there. I do understand that the long-term plan consultation, um, there has been a decision to keep the Rickerton bus lounge open. Yeah. And so those um, things are coming through in the wider transport area. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I'll open it up for debate. Sarah, would you like to open the debate, please? Thank you. Kia toroa te ao. The draft climate change strategy was not where I had hoped it would be. Um, and submissions from the community were also clear that greater detail was needed. An emissions reduction pathway based on science and a plan to get us there. While there hasn't been time since submissions to get a technical group together and work through all of that to incorporate it into the strategy, we have now included that as an urgent next step for the council and for our city, which I'm really pleased about. 
We have also added education and programmes to encourage low emissions behaviours as a priority, and work has already started with ECAN and other councils on this. We will need Ōtotahi specific information and advice, though, and it is on its way. Submitters asked us to prioritise emissions reductions in the transport space, given that 54 per cent of our city's emissions come from transport, and our strategy reflects this with our transport plan due by the end of the year. Our strategy says, over the next decade, we will jointly make significant changes to our transport infrastructure to help meet our emissions targets. To halve our emissions in the next day, decade, we will need to dramatically reduce the distance travelled in fossil fuel vehicles. We will promote alternatives such as active and public transport, and getting people out of cars and using more active travel modes also contributes to wider co-benefits in health and wellbeing. The advice from the Independent Climate Change Commission, based on the cross-party supported Zero Carbon Act, is clear. We need to act now to avoid the worst environmental and social impacts of climate change, and that investing now will halve the impact on GDP of inaction. Acting now is in the best interests of our economy and our residents. Our climate change strategy is broad-ranging. It looks at both mitigation via emissions reductions and at the adaptation work that we need to do. Council does not have all the answers or all the influence to make it a reality. We need everyone to play their part. Central government will play a key role, but so do our hundreds of community groups working on food resilience and waste reduction, on native ecosystem restoration and carbon sequestration, on connecting communities and providing education, on spreading the word and encouraging hopeful action. We will need to work with Naitahu, our universities, businesses and other agencies as well to make the changes needed, not only to avoid the worst impacts of climate change, but to make sure that no one is left behind in the transition to a low carbon economy. We do need to halve our city's emissions by 2030. It's only nine years away. It's a big ask, but it's completely doable if we work together. <coughs> Success will not be the work of one, but the work of many. E hara takutoa e te toa takitahi. Ingari e toa takitini. Kia ora. Kia ora, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Jimmy Chin. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. Yes. And uh, first, I'm quite happy. You know, all uh, the Otatahi criteria, climate change, the strategy will be uh, replaced by the uh, Otatahi criteria, uh, the climate resilient, uh, those the, uh, strategy. Because if we review all the uh, kind of uh, our council the strategic framework with particular vision so developing resilience in the 21st century so I'm quite happy that this aligns with our uh, resilient uh, city second one the, uh, because a uh, council we received uh, 154 submissions 113 is individual 41 is a group but 95 like uh, Sarah she mentioned earlier this uh, uh, suggests actions, no? but this one we actually, if we review this final version, actually particular I'm uh, impressed with this uh, paragraph, including in the uh, 10 action uh, uh, programs. For instance, like uh, page the 17 here, the content of the climate action program will be reviewed annually and updated as required in order to respond to new information, new legislation, and uh, as progress is made across our focus area, this is kind of reflect and re, uh, respond uh, to the uh, submission the, uh, the request. The other one is uh, because we are all aware this climate change actually is, uh, you know, is affected and uh, uh, including quite wide range the uh, uh, public transport, you know, and the waste management, the energy efficiency actually is totally aligned with our uh, 10 years uh, uh, long-term plan. So the, I'm quite happy, you know, because in a long-term plan, we can see we amend uh, some of the, you know, the, the, the budget, you know, increase the little bit budget, uh, try to support for the implementation of this uh, uh, climate change. So generally speaking, I'm quite happy to support uh, the, the final version of Otatahi Kwaichi Climate Resilience Strategy. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Yanni and then Andrew. Yeah. Thank you. Um, while I appreciate the work that's gone on on the strategy, it does very much feel like to me that we've simply reinvented the wheel. And actually, the frustrating thing is that our 2010 Climate Smart Strategy had very clear actions and bu indicative budgets. And actually, most of the stuff in our 2010 strategy 
is actually almost the same as what's being proposed today. And instead of coming up with a new strategy, what I believe we should be doing is understanding why the things we said we would do haven't been done and making sure that funding and priority is attached to those things that are important. It doesn't mean that that strategy shouldn't have been updated. It absolutely should be reviewed and updated. But the, the frustration is that we seem to have a lack, a greater lack of clarity in what's being proposed than what we had previously. So I won't support this today. Um, I do think it's really important that when we say we're going to do things, uh, and you can take rainwater tanks as a classic example, we said we would do it as part of our integrated water strategy. Um, we heard submissions through into this project, uh, into the strategy, that that was a project that people supported, and yet we still have no clear budget, no clear understanding of when that work will happen. So I think the strategy lacks details, it lacks really clear um, funding to make the things that we say we're going to do in it to, to happen. So I won't be supporting it, um, because I think we do actually, as a council, need to take this issue seriously. We have declared a climate change emergency. We have said that it's a priority. And yet when we look at the way in which we're coming up with strategies, we're not attaching, in my view, the necessary funding required to ensure that the things we say we're going to do get done, which I think is incredibly disappointing, but it certainly was reflective of the feedback that we got from submitters on this. Andrew? Thank you. I'll um, keep my comments both brief and, and deliberately at quite a high level. Um, there's a significant level of interest in climate change issues, sustainable transport, biodiversity, <laughs> the environment, ecology, natural hazards, um, and we saw and heard this loud and clear through submissions not only to this strategy but also to the um, LTP, and we saw and heard that a number of times and in different ways. The submissions that we heard reflect that thankfully climate change and climate change concerns and considerations have become much more of a mainstream conversation than they were maybe even a couple of years ago. The conversations that are taking place around suburban dining tables, at barbecues, in schoolrooms and other places where people have those type of conversations have moved from a discussion about whether climate change is real or not to how we're going to deal with, how we're going to take action to um, combat the effects of climate change. And I think people now understand that that's not just collective action, it's also action at the individual level, the household level, as well as at the community level. Now, as a council, we've got many, many strategies. Some of those strategies have got action plans, and some of those action plans are well prioritised. This is one strategy that, once it's adopted today, needs to be implemented through a clear focus and a clear, well-prioritised action plan, which needs to be across many different parts of council's business. It's a strategy that absolutely needs to be implemented, that needs to lead to change, that needs to lead to action. There's probably not any one of our other strategies which is more important than this one. So climate change action needs to occur, as I said, at the individual level, the household level, at the community level. This isn't just about what council can do itself. It's about how we can lead by example, how we can partner, how we can encourage, how we can educate. And council's in a unique position because of the breadth of our business to do this across of a, number, a number of different actions, a number of different activities, there are some clear opportunities right in front of us, and we need to take them. So I like the new name. Climate resilience is absolutely what this is all about. So I look forward to seeing the actions resulting from this strategy starting to be implemented as soon as possible, and realizing that there's much more work to be done, realizing that this isn't perfect, but realising the absolute urgency, I'm really happy to be able to support the adoption of this strategy today. Pauline? Yeah, thank you. Look, I won't repeat the things that uh, others have said because I agree with all those points. I do want to pick up on Councillor Johansson's point that we have not been doing anything. We have been doing a lot. Our cycleways programme, our MCR programme, is... Uh, is held in high regard and that's having a tremendous impact with an 80% increase in cyclists since 2016. We've also embraced energy efficiency programmes and look at the new St Albans Community Centre which is incredibly energy efficient and carbon sequestering as we speak. And we've in installed charging stations through a partnership programme with uh, private enterprises. Um, other partnerships programmes we can see in our biodiversity, in our plantings, in our community waterways. 
and we've also um, set up the environment. Um, um, what do we call it, Sarah? The committee, the uh, funding program through the LTP, yeah. climate resilience, and. Um, that's another partnership fund. I mean, the funding is, is a huge um, is a huge plus. We've got the waste minimisation program, and we've got the climate change resilience working group. Um, so, you know, we are doing things, but the biggest thing we can do is lead and bring people with us because we can't do this on our own. We know that it's something that everybody has to help with, and our submissions indicate to us that if we lead, we will have support from our communities for behaviour change from very small changes to much larger ones, the most important being how we get around in our transport system. So I will support this today, and I think it's a great piece of work. Thank you to the staff for all the work on it. And uh, we are doing things, we will go forward, and education and bringing people with us is going to be the best thing we can do. You want to, uh, Anne? Uh, kia turia te ao, ensuring the world continues. Uh, some don't believe climate change is happening. Some believe it is, but it's not the result of human behaviour, but simply the natural cycle of things. So let's today set aside our differences of opinion about this and see that adopting this strategy is the opportunity to reset our partnership with the natural world. Throughout both the draft climate resilience strategy and the LTP consultations, we heard a strong call from communities to work in partnership with the Council to achieve the best outcomes. Today is the opportunity to reset our partnership with the natural environment. I saw this referred to recently as the community of creation. I warmed this term, community of creation, as it sees other creatures as fellow creatures in the journey. That human beings are not above other creatures, but alongside other creatures, not separate from other creatures, but fellow creatures, not outside nature, but inside nature. There is urgency to reimagine the relationship of humans with nature, no longer as masters, but as companions, no longer as exploiters, but as carers, no longer as tourists passing through, but as residents with shared responsibilities. Let's see today is the time to stand united to lead, as Councillor Cotter said, to place the strategy in place so that our children will thank us as their children catch freshwater crayfish in local streams as we did. Please validate this work today, the great work that's been done, and ensure the future well-being of all our fellow creatures and future generations and let's support the staff recommend, recommendation to adopt this climate resilience strategy. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, Melanie? Everyone knows um, this quote, um, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not from the law acts. And I think that's what the purpose of this um, climate change strategy um, is. Um, look, we all know the Paris Agreement um, is about trying to keep um, global warming to um, 1.5 degree target. It's what the New Zealand government is trying to do, and it's really what we are trying to do um, as a Christchurch City Council and as Christchurch, because global warming and climate change is going to be absolutely huge for us in future. It's going to affect our infrastructure, it's going to affect our coastlines, it's going to affect our rivers, it's going to cause flooding, there's going to be issues with agriculture, it's going to affect our biodiversity. It's got far-reaching consequences. Um, now with our plan, the thing, one of the things that I'm um, most pleased with is actually goal three, that we have a just transition to be an innovative, low emission economy. Um, on um, the UN website under sustainable um, development, it actually talks about a just transition, um, and that's about how climate change and social inclusion can work um, together, and there's actually um, a guide here for people who want to invest in this. Um, but it does talk about um, one of the ways um, to accelerate climate change and optimise its benefits is to ensure that it's inclusive, and I think you know that's very important um, for us here. It means taking into account the distributional consequences so that no one is left behind, and it's clear that the benefits of the transition will far outweigh the costs 
manage well the transition will both prevent the immense human and economic costs of climate disruption and also improve growth, generate net new jobs and reduce inequality. In fact, the transition is essential to maintaining decent work and thriving communities into the coming decades. Now, I know that people talked about um, wanting to have action plans, and it comes through with every strategy that we have, and I agree with that, and we are going to be doing that as a council, working with people and organisations, um, as Sarah talked about. So I look forward to seeing how that goes. The The climate change strategy is a is an overarching structure that we will um, do a lot of work underneath to achieve our goals. So I really hope that we can all get behind it. <coughs> James? That is half the problem. No, it's, it's not quite half the problem. It might even be higher. It's but higher. look, I am really pleased to be in a position to support this strategy. Uh, noting that the change in the title to, from climate change to climate resilience is notable because the thing is that we need to change our, our thinking, we need to change our values, we need to change our behaviours. And I just want to note that we're not doing this to save the planet, because it was here before us, it'll be here after us, and this is the problem. We're saving the species if we think about what we're doing now, and um, that's my picture. Okay. Anyone else? Before I get Sarah to close off. Um, Aaron? Yeah, um, there's many good things in this um, strategy. Anything we do uh, to uh, make the planet a better place, look after the environment, uh, is, is fantastic. Um, that's a background that I've come from myself. Um, I have an edible landscape. I've uh, been vegetarian for 20 years. Uh, used to grill or plant trees with my friends over 30 years ago. Um, and uh, so doing things that are good for the environment um, is something that appeals to me. Um, Having a strategy, though, like Yanni pointed out, doesn't necessarily get you the results. And you have to weigh up uh, the numbers all the time. Because if something makes uh, e an economic sense, often it will make an environmental sense. Um, when you subsidise or, or in, try and incentivise or force a behaviour, you will get unintended consequences. And one of the ones that was pointed out to us during um, our uh, submissions was uh, this council's anti-car policy and how that has increased the net usage of oil in the city. Just because we tell people not to use cars doesn't mean they will, it just means they'll go somewhere else. That somewhere else in this city just happened to be further, so the u oil usage went up. Yes, cycling numbers have gone up. Coincidentally, at the same time, bus numbers have gone down. So uh, is there a correlation? It was raised with me over the weekend that possibly there is. Um, we need to be careful. Is um, climate change the biggest issue in the world? Uh, no. Poverty is. Um, you can't look. At, in fact, it would be arrogant to look at a mother or a father in the eye who will have a dying child this week somewhere in the world, and there will be plenty of them, and say, we're not going to spend money on you now because we're going to save uh, generations and five generations' time from having to move from a coastline. Um, Poverty is a big issue, and by addressing poverty, we also uh, address climate change. And um, you know, the world got its knickers in a twist about COVID in the last year because it threw out the Western way of life uh, considerably, uh, and you know, just under two million people died in, in a year. 1.7 million people die of dysentery every single year, and we don't exactly do a lot about that. Um, Poverty is real. Um, climate change is real. You can't deny climate change. It's like denying gravity or denying religion. They exist. Um, it's all around us. Uh, so pe there aren't deniers. Um, uh, and to, to do to court label people such just because they question the numbers uh, of when you um, in you, you like for instance on a on a particular road we might take out a lane and put in a cycleway. So we increase. The, uh, sorry, we decrease the traffic flow, which has a carbon increase when we've tried to decrease carbon by putting in the uh, cycle lane. We have to do things in balance, and that is why you have uh, a, a percentage of the population who aren't going along on this journey. And what we need to do as a council is take everyone along on the journey, have measurable outcomes, and get to them. And always use math. Thank you. 
I've just got a couple of things I'd like to say um, beforehand. There have been two kind of drivers that sit behind uh, my phrase, or two phrases that have been drivers for me. Uh, and I, I've, I don't know who I'm quoting, and I like to attribute when I do with the first one, um, we're the first generation to see the impacts of climate change and the last generation to be able to do something about it. Uh, and I, I think we need to take that absolutely seriously. Um, and I do know that it was Obama who said we cannot condemn our children and their children to a future that is beyond their capacity to repair. And that really ties in with the previous statement that there is an intergenerational responsibility that sits with us. And in terms of Christchurch being a low-lying coastal city, there are a couple of issues that are of particular relevance to us. One is, is in relation to the coastal environment and the impacts of sea level rise. The second is in relation to um, uh, transport, because the single occupancy vehicle, the, the, the motor car that we heard before from James Daniels, that is a, a huge impact on our emissions. It's more than half. And we do need to address that as an issue. But we don't have the tools sitting around this table as the Christchurch City Council because of the sort of unbelievable split between local government and regional government in terms of allocation of responsibility <coughs> for public transport. So we have responsibility for active transport, but it should be fully integrated, a fully integrated public and active transport system which we need to address. And I just wanted to share with you a quote from a letter that I wrote to the minister a couple of years ago. Um, and this was about transferring the responsibility from one to the other. But we've got the ability to transfer, but the model's broken, so transferring responsibility isn't enough. We need the opportunity to work with our two neighbouring districts so we can trial new ways of both procuring and delivering a fully integrated public and active transport system for the future. We need to be sh freed from the shackles of the public transport operating model, which the government's consulting on at the moment, and be allowed to trial the kinds of initiatives that we believe will make a difference. Free buses for children and students of all ages, for example. We need to trial electric shuttles that can be waved down on popular routes and around the CBD. We need to trial mobility as a service with an app or a dial-up service, connecting people to rapid transit routes with smart mechanisms to prioritise the movement of public transport. We have our own small technology pilot programme, Smart City, which we believe can we can use to initiate a partnership for a trial to occur. If we continue with the plan as required, it will limit the flexibility and, and adaptability for future demands. And that's that's part of the difference that we need to make. So thank you for all of the work that's been done on it. Sarah, I'll let you close the debate. Thank you. Wototahi Christchurch has been leading the way on planning for climate change, with our first climate change plan approved in 1995. But we haven't always acted on these plans. The pushback on action has been strong. But we have done many things, including switching our small fleet to EVs and building our major cycle routes. But to not approve an updated climate resilience strategy today and the associate bu associated budget in the long-term plan is to delay action from the organisation and our engagement with partners. This strategy directs work that is much more <coughs> thorough and detailed than the pre previous Climate Smart strategy, and it's more ambitious. To go back to the old Climate Smart strategy from over a decade ago in 2010 is to miss opportunities and new ways of working together to effect change. We are a different council now. We are a different city, and probably for the first time as a council, we will be passing the budgets needed to get much of the work of the strategy underway on the same day in our long-term plan. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. No. That's, um, so if you could note um, Aaron Kewen and um, Yanni Johansson. Thank you. That's carried. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much to the team. Thank you.